I'm going to show you some hints that will make unicycle riding uh, more pleasant for you. These are going to range from very easy to do to practically impossible for you to do. First thing, easy thing, wear gloves to protect the skin on your hands. I don't care about anything else, but when I tear the skin on my hands, it makes my life miserable for weeks. These are knitted Kevlar work gloves. They are truly ugly, but they are cut resistant, they're tear resistant, and they have great airflow so that instead of your hands being cooked by the, the gloves, uh, you just have air flowing over them. And they're very cheap. I bought this pair for $350 online. These are Wells Lamont. They call them Kevlar work gloves, although they seem more like mittens. Unicycle hint number two. If you hate this kind of a stand and you're tired of fighting with it and getting it hooked on your spokes and trying to get it in there, but you want to stand, throw this thing away and make one that works. It's not that hard. We just have these two pieces of wood that the frame sits down into. If uh, you have this cut here at the bottom, as I have, the bottom of your frame will fit right in there and stand up. But you also want to have these posts along the side so that if it does fall over, either way, so if it's not exactly balanced, this is okay. It's still going to run into these posts so that it's not going to tip over. And this is not that hard to make. You see what I've done here? I've put a metal bracket to hold the vertical piece because it does get quite a bit of stress. Int number three. As you ride, your spokes rub against each other like this and they eat each other up. If you are happy replacing your wheel prematurely, then you can live with this. But if you don't want them, the spokes to eat each other, you have to find some way to prevent this. You can either have them slide over each other with some kind of interposer, or you can make them tightly connected to each other. So I first tried this interposer. I couldn't buy such a thing, so I made this out of nylon. It's got a groove in it running down the center, and that groove fits into the top spoke, or one of the spokes, and it holds there firmly, and this does work. The problem with this is that it takes four hours to make a set of these for one wheel. Uh, since you only have to do that one time, maybe that's okay. The other approach is to solidly connect your spokes to each other. Now, the spokes are stainless steel, and you can't solder or weld them to each other, but what you can do is wrap wire around each pair of spokes and solder that wire and this holds them firmly together. So when you do this you will use 24 gauge telephone hookup wire and a medium sized soldering iron and lots of flux. You must use lots of flux because the wire uh, that you're wrapping is copper, the spokes are stainless steel, it tends to make the solder roll off, but if you put lots of flux on the wire, the flux will, the, will hold the solder while it um, melts into the wire, and you'll have good connections like I have here. And these will last as long as your wheel does. So you see there's no play at all between these. When I first did this, I was afraid that it would make the wheel stiff and difficult to ride, or at least uncomfortable, but in fact I couldn't find any difference at all. It felt exactly the same as before I had done this. This one is an important safety tip, but only for uh, people who ride backwards. Uh, you don't have to do this at all if you only ride forward. And that is, you'll notice that you have a left thread on your left pedal, and you have a right-handed thread on your right pedal. The purpose of that is to have these screw into the crank as you are pedaling so that they, the pedals won't come out. But that only works when you're going forward. When you are riding backwards, it does just the opposite. They unscrew. 
And if you uh, have not done this before, you'll be surprised by having a petal fall out, as I was. And you have to glue them in. I have used this blue Loctite. This is not the strongest stuff. This is the weakest hold, and it seems to work fine. You could also use the red, but that's supposed to be permanent, and you may have trouble getting your petals out. And since the blue has worked for me, I would suggest using it. Now we're moving on to the hard stuff. If you find that your wheel groans when you make hard maneuvers, especially if you ride backwards and forwards and uh, you are making a, a high torque direction reversal and it makes noises, and after a while you find that it gets loose to the point where you really are afraid to ride it, it's not because you have loose spokes or a loose wheel, what you have is a damaged spline joint. The axle goes through the hub, and what keeps them so that they rotate together is a spline joint. And in particular, if you do high torque direction reversals, the spline joint wears out very quickly, and also it's quite dangerous because... When you are riding forward, you lean forward. And basically, you are always pedaling to have the wheel catch up to you and that's what keeps you balanced. When you ride backwards you're leaning backwards and the same thing you are pedaling the wheel to catch up with you but when you do a reversal you're leaning forward you're pedaling for the wheel to catch up and before you change your direction you already lean backwards and now you have to kick that wheel under you. And if at that moment the wheel slips instead of responding to your kick, there's a good chance that you're going to fall over because you have not anticipated that kind of a delay. You're expecting the wheel to respond. If you find this happening, you have to do something about the spline joint or replace the entire wheel. So if you're not sure what your problem is, but you know that you're wheel is making noise and it doesn't feel like it's responding very well. An easy test for a spline joint problem is to mount your crank, one of your cranks, in a vise like this so that it can't move and then you grab the outer rim and you just twist it. If you find that it is responding like this, that is you don't hear any noise, it doesn't seem to be slipping, then you don't have a spline joint problem. But if instead you hear a groan, and you feel it slipping, you have a spline joint problem. Now the reason that this is in my category of hard problems is that it is not easy to fix it. First of all, you have to get the wheel apart. That means pulling off the crank, and pulling off the bearing. And in order to do that, you need two different sizes of sturdy gear pullers. You need one to pull off the crank arm and another one to pull off the bearing. It takes a tremendous amount of force to pull the bearing. If you haven't ever pulled this bearing before, when it first pops loose it will sound like an explosion in your wheel and you'll be sure that you have broken something but you won't. Uh, and then you'll get it apart. But even after you do all of that and you're down to the point where you can address the problem that's in the spline joint, the only thing that you can do is weld the axle to the hub and uh, if you don't have welding equipment you're not going to be able to do that. There are uh, two different kinds of metal. This one is a really cheap unicycle with chrome. You can't actually weld to the chrome but what you can do is grind off the chrome and weld it or you can braze. I have tried silver solder. It does not work. It holds for about one hour and then breaks. You have to either braze it, and uh, brass brazing is okay, that's strong enough, or you have to weld it. And now the last hint, and the hardest. For this one, you not only need to weld, you need an industrial bandsaw, you need more equipment than most people have, but I'm going to show it to you anyway, because maybe some manufacturer will come up with something. If you do mixed riding, like I do, long distances and uh, pirouettes and all kinds of fancy maneuvers mixed with uh, long uh, treks. You need a seat that's a combination. If it's wide in the center, your long rides are going to hurt you. You're 
groin skin will fold and tear itself up and you'll come back bloody. But if it's narrow everywhere, you don't have enough of a surface to grab for doing any tricks. What you really need is a seat that's very narrow in the middle and flares out fairly radically toward the front and back and is very deep, a very deep saddle. When you put all of that together, then you have a seat that will work under all kinds of different riding conditions. I tried to buy such a thing and I couldn't. I had to make this myself. And the way I did it was I welded this steel bar onto a pipe that would fit into the unicycle head. And then on top of that, I have bolted this wooden frame that I cut on my bandsaw. And you need a 14-inch bandsaw to do that. And then on top of that, I put closed cell foam. And you can see the foam is under here. And then I glued leather on top of that. So you see, this is not something that most people can do. But perhaps some manufacturer is going to look at this video and say, oh, we can make that. Maybe someone will buy it. And finally, what I've done is to protect the seat and also to give me handles, I've taken industrial strength hydraulic hose. It has a wire sheath around it, but I've also put stainless steel spring wires inside of that. And I've bored holes into the wooden frame and glued this into those holes. So what I have is not just a good handle, but also a bumper. So if the unicycle falls this way, it doesn't land on the seat. If it falls sideways, it doesn't land on the seat. It always just lands on the bumper. And yet, the way the uh, handles are stretched out in front and in back, they don't interfere with my legs.